morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to a Monday live crochet along. It's time to make a ladybug. <laughs> we had a little surprise live stream on the weekend. Um, we were talking about the ladybug because uh, I think we did this on Friday. We did a little a little uh, applique of a bee. And um, several of you asked about making a ladybug. And you kind of have to have a ladybug to go with the bee. I mean, it's like... It's like garden mascots, you know, they're, they're so stinking cute. Anyway, um, so we had this, this was the Friday video and uh, it kind of came up in conversation during the live stream on the weekend. A lot of you have asked for a ladybug. So uh, Mr. and Stitches and I put on our thinking caps. Um, there was even some conversation <laughs> at the Etsy shop about them. Um, I've got a couple of other early iterations of my design that I'll show you a little later on, but this is the little guy we're making today. If you are a silk, or Vicuña channel member. Um, we've just posted login information, up-to-date login information over on the community tab. You can pop over and check that out now or later. But we've got a members uh, pattern version of this little ladybug applique available for you on the members only webpage. Um, and for the rest of you, if you'd like to pick up a pattern, we also have a version of this pattern written up and it's in our Etsy shop. It's today's sneaky sale, along with our ladybug 12 inch granny square. So if you really love ladybugs, we do have a giant 12 inch fancy granny square that is a ladybug. And um, it is in the same um, design concept as all the other large 12 inch fancy granny squares that we did for our 2017 fancy granny square calendar blanket. We've got like, like 36 of these big fancy granny squares. Anyway, we do have a ladybug. Um, and that one we included in the ladybug sneaky sale today too, uh, because we're feeling very springy. It is a springy day. I know a lot of you are enjoying some nice weather finally in some places. So this is all good news. It just puts me in the best mood. So let's make ourselves a ladybug. Um, this little guy is about three and a half inches tall or nine centimeters. You can um, use different yarn weights and different fibers. So because it's an applique, I assume you're going to want to add it to something. So if you're adding it to a blanket or a hat or whatever, I would recommend trying to keep the same fiber content. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same weight category, but it should be the same fiber content. So if it's an acrylic blanket, you know, aim to use acrylic. If it's a, a cotton hat, maybe aim to use cotton. Blends are okay. If it's a, a cotton hat and you've got like a, a, a cotton acrylic, you know, scrap that you want to use up, that's okay too. Uh, and if it's just something that's going to be, I don't know, stitched on to one of your big, beautiful baskets or something like that, then you don't have to worry too much. Usually you want to keep the fiber content the same just because when you wash an article, um, everything kind of works differently in the wash. Um, and if you're never sure, if, so if you're ever unsure, hand wash whatever the article is, and that gives you all the control. So uh, I used a size three black yarn for this and a size four red yarn. You can use different weights. You can use the same weight. I just like the way this little sort of skinny black yarn works with this pattern, but you could also use black yarn. Uh, I should say you could use the same weight category yarn as well. Um, I'm using a four millimeter hook. This is also known as a G or a six pair of scissors and a yarn needle, the usual. You need about like eight yards of red, maybe five yards of black. You need very little uh, and maybe one extra yard for stitching. So you're going to leave your tails on. I had them all kind of bundled up underneath that. But you're going to leave your tails on so that you can stitch it down to something later. So that is how the applique will work. Um, I was going to demonstrate with the black yarn today, but uh, I'm actually second guessing it. Do you, what do you guys think? Do you want me to, to go ahead with the black? It's very little. I definitely can show you um, with the French knots because it stands out really nicely against the, um, the needle. Uh, there's basically just seven stitches in here plus a couple of antenna. I don't think that it's going to be difficult to see because the black actually shows up really well against the silver of the hook. And I feel like you can see what I'm doing. Um, so you know what? I'm going to try it with the black. And if anybody's got, you know, trouble seeing what I'm doing, I will, I will switch to one quickly with a, a different color. But I think we should be okay. There's really only a handful of stitches in here. The main body is the most... Um, the most intensive part, if I can say that, it's really not. This is such a short little project. Uh, so we'll get to that. We'll see how, how it looks. I think you should be able to see everything pretty well uh, because of the, the difference between the, the dark and the light 
hook and yarn, uh, but we'll get there and we'll figure it out together. So here we go. Uh, today's little uh, applique shouldn't take you very long and I'd say it's good for beginners. So if you're a beginner crocheter, then uh, definitely give it a try. It's so cute. You can tuck it on. I might add one actually. I might make one in cotton and add it onto my new bucket hat. Uh, because I feel like the bucket hat we made a few weeks ago has a kind of a spring garden feel to it because I used all these different colors. So I'm thinking I might add the little the little ladybug to it. <laughs> Mr. and Stitches is also here. He's pressing buttons. I think he might be refreshing his coffee. Good morning, everybody. I have fresh, strong coffee. Oh, I am so having it's a good morning. It's good very morning. good morning. Yes, uh, Ms. Rabbit. If it's a problem, we'll make two. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with our red yarn. We're going to make a cinch circle. Don't be afraid of the cinch circle. You just want to cross your yarn into a little circle. So just so that one side leans over the other, hook goes through the circle, grabs the long working yarn, picks up a loop, and then just chain one. And that secures your circle. And you can work all of your stitches over top of your short tail. And then we can cinch it shut. We're going to start with six single crochet in that circle. We are not joining our rows. We are not chaining one to begin a new row. So you're not joining your row with a slip stitch. We're working a continuous round for the main body of our little um, ladybug. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's six single crochet. I am waiting on my new glasses, so please forgive me if you see me pausing. <laughs> Cinch up that circle nice and tight. You can work over top of that short tail or leave it out and weave it in later. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to work over top of mine because I just like to do that. But make sure it's nice and tight. You've got six single crochet at the end of row one. We are not joining with a slip stitch. We are not chaining one to start row two. Just slip your hook right underneath that first stitch of row one. And we're going to start row two. In row two, it's two single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And if you have trouble keeping track or sort of counting, or if you're easily distracted, you might want to have a stitch marker on hand. You can use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch of each row. That way you can just focus on making sure you've worked two single crochet in each stitch. And at the end of row two, we're going to be up to 12 stitches. What time of the year do you guys usually see the ladybugs show up? There we go. That's the end of row two. I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee. End of row two, 12 single crochet. Pammy says summer, summer she sees them show up. Around May for Sue in Texas. Spring for Kathleen. Saw one last week, says Ms. Jersey. Oh my goodness. Last week for, for Fairy Queen Danny. So it's a little bit all over the place. I saw some the other day when the sun came out. Oh, June for Deb. This is great. Uh, sweetie, do you know when we see ours? I'm trying to think. I feel like just suddenly all, all of a sudden they're there. Usually um, in the nicer weather, like you definitely, It definitely needs to be like closer really warm. to the summer, but I think we get, sometimes we get a big surge in the fall. Yes, we do get like, a big surge um, in the fall. October. Yeah, we have them in late, I'd say late May, early June is when they start to show up. And then they're around all the way through the summer. And then, we, yes, we get a big surge in the fall. All right, here we go. Row three, we're going to start with two single crochet in the first stitch. I'm going to mark the first stitch with my stitch marker. And the increased pattern is just one single crochet into the next stitch. And then we repeat that five more times. Two single crochet into the next stitch one single crochet into the next. Two, one, two, one. All the way back to the stitch marker. And we'll be up to 18. 18 stitches at the end of row three. Christine, thank you for picking up a pattern. So from 12 stitches at the end of row two to 18 stitches at the end of row three. Welcome, welcome everybody. If you're just tuning in, we are making a little ladybug today. Let's make sure that's visible so you can sort of see it. It's not blocked by my hand. Okay. 
And there we go. End of row three, we're up to 18 single crochet all the way around. We've got a nice little circle, spiraling circle happening. We've got two more rows of increase, row four and row five. We're gonna continue with the same kind of uh, increase pattern. So we start with two single crochet in the first stitch of the row. I'm gonna replace my stitch marker just so I don't have to think too hard. <laughs> and single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So the new increase pattern is two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next two, two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way back to the stitch marker, and that will bring us up to 24 single crochet at the end of row four. I don't think I've ever had a ladybug bite me. I think they're pretty gentle as a rule. Uh, at least not the not the classic North American ladybugs, the ones that are really, really red. Um, the ones that came in from elsewhere uh, several years ago, I think I, under, I understood that they imported a bunch of ladybugs to deal with a, a pest problem in North America, and they kind of basically took over. They're like slightly more orange looking. They're not like the deep, rich red of uh, the classic North American ladybug. Um, they might be a little bitey. <laughs> I love ladybugs. I think they're so cute and they're so pretty. All right, that's the end of row four. We are up to 24 stitches. We've got one more row of increasing to go and then we'll be done with the body. And here we go. Two single crochet into the next stitch that begins row five. I'm gonna put my stitch marker back on the first stitch. And then it's a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And that's the little pattern all the way around for row five. Two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into each of the next three. And you're gonna repeat all that around back to our stitch marker. We'll be up to 30 stitches even at the end of row five. I'm also thinking that I might make a few of these in like a lot bigger. I just had an I just had an idea, gang. <laughs> I'm just thinking these would be really cute using uh, a bulky weight, like ideally a cotton or a wool, uh, maybe even a nylon. Actually, maybe a nylon might be better. And if I can't get the bulky, I would just hold several strands together, but make them really big. And then put them out in the garden. Wouldn't that be cute? Having a couple of them, like I've got, I've got raised garden beds. I'm just thinking a couple of them sort of stuck to the side of the bed might actually be kind of cute. <laughs> and three. All right, that is it for row five. So. That is 30 stitches at the end of row five. That completes all of our increasing, but we're not completely done yet. We just sort of want to smooth up the circle a little bit. So we're going to single crochet into each of the next six stitches. This isn't going to change your stitch count. It's just going to sort of smooth that edge a little bit. There we go. So single crochet into each of the next stitches after you finish completing row six. That basically brings you back up to be in alignment with where row one turns into row two, it sort of just evens everything up. Then you can slip stitch into the next stitch and you can fasten off. You wanna leave a long tail because this is the tail you would sew down the body of your, your applique to your project with. So you would when you go to sew down your applique, you wanna sew down red using red and black using black. So you're gonna have end up with two little tails but that's perfect. You just sort of sew the same color and the same color, just so that those little stitches don't show onto your project. So there we go. That is the body made. Six, uh, I should say five simple rows of single crochet in the round and you've got a nice little round circle. We're gonna add the little ladybug dots in a minute, but first, we're gonna put on the head. So like I said before, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing, uh, even though I'm using black yarn because it's skinny yarn. 
and it shows up pretty nicely. It's a good contrast against the red yarn of my ladybug body and against the silver of my hook. So here we go. The head is very quick, very short. You're just going to start with a slip knot. Nothing tricky about that. You're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch in the same place that you fastened off the red. So you see if you pull up on your long red tail and there's that little space right there, you slip your hook in there and join with a slip stitch. Easy peasy. And now you've got these stitches here. You want to skip two stitches, find the next one. So skip two right from where you joined with a slip stitch, skip two stitches, find the third. You're going to double crochet into that seven times. So skip two, seven double crochet into the next stitch. And you can weave in your short tail later. You can also uh, just work over top of it like I'm doing. So you guys know how to do a double crochet. Seven double crochets into that same stitch. This is what's going to create the head. One, two, three, four. There we go. So seven double crochets. It's your basic fan fan stitch, seven double crochets into that stitch. You're going to pull back on your work so that you can see that next stitch. You're going to skip it and the one next to it. So skip two stitches and then find the next one and slip stitch. And there we go. That is the main part of the head done. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Oh, a butterfly, Desiree. That's a cute idea. We've got a little butterfly, but I think a bigger one to match sort of like scale wise with these guys would be a great idea. Welcome everybody. Hi. Hi, Sandy. We've got the UK clicking in here. Welcome, welcome everybody. All right. That's the head done. So easy peasy. We're not logging or actually logging off. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell I use computers for a living? We are not fastening off our yarn yet. We've got one more row to go for the head because we want to put on the little antennae. So this is easy. You're just going to chain one and turn your entire applique around. So now we're looking at the back side or the wrong side of our applique. And you're going to slip stitch into each of the next three stitches. So um, you don't have to use the slip stitch. So you can skip that slip stitch. You just want to slip stitch into the first of those seven stitches along the head of the uh, ladybug. And for more specifically, we want to aim to add our two little antennae in the very middle of the head. So you've got seven double crochets. The middle double crochet, which is double crochet number four, will be blank. It'll just be left sort of sitting empty. And we're going to put an antenna coming out of the double crochets on either side of that. So however you get up to that spot, that's what you're going for. So if you felt that your double crochets or your stitch work was a little off to one side or a little crooked or somewhere tight or something, all you want to do is make these little antennae in the, the main middle part of the head. So you want them balanced. That's all you're aiming for. So don't stress out about the stitch count or anything too much. I say you just skip that slip stitch that you joined the head with or anchored it back on the body and you just slip stitch into the first three of those double crochet stitches and see I'm just slip stitching nice and easy not tight just easy peasy slip stitching up the first three of those double crochet, there's the middle stitch. You can sort of, if I pull it apart, you can really see it. So there's the middle stitch and that's the one that's going to remain untouched. Well, I'm going to slip stitch into it, but I want to put antenna out on the third stitch, slip stitch into number four and put antenna number two out on the fifth stitch. So here we go. Just like the B we did, you're going to chain four. Easy peasy. Skip that first chain from the hook and slip stitch into each of the remaining three chains. So you just slip stitch all the way back down. Uh, 
And when you get back down, you can sort of, if I pull up on it, you can see it. You slip stitch back into the same double crochet that you came out of. So that's antenna number one. Slip stitch into the next stitch. That's the very middle of the head. And into the stitch after that. This is double crochet number five. And now we're going to do that antenna again. Chain four. Skip the first chain from the hook and slip stitch into each of the remaining three. Ooh, a wreath. Ooh, whose idea was that? That was, that's a great idea. I see Crocus mentioning it. Slip stitch back into the top of the double crochet. That's your two little antenna made. I love the idea of doing a wreath with a bunch of these little appliques. What a cute idea. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even have to, I mean, if you crocheted the wreath, you could sew the appliques down. But if you were just using like a regular wreath, um, like a wreath form or grapevine or something, you wouldn't even have to leave your tails on. You could just fasten off, weave in your ends and then glue these little guys down. What a fun idea. I love that. I love that. Ooh, I love that idea. <laughs> You've got two more stitches of, or two more double crochet stitches in the head left. So just slip stitch into each of them. You can skip the anchoring slip stitch that you joined your yarn with originally and just fasten off. Remember, if you're sewing it, so if you're sewing it down, leave a long tail so that you can sew along the head. If you're gonna glue these though into an existing project, like a wreath or something, you don't need your long tails. You can just sort of fasten off as normal, weave in your tails, and then uh, you're almost done. All we have to do now is add some dots uh, I'm going to show you how to do the French knot dot, which is what I was doing here, because these are super cute, nice and easy. It just sort of keeps it all yarn, but you could, <laughs> you could do whatever you wanted. You could add uh, little felt dots if you wanted to. Um, you could add little buttons or little beads if you wanted to. In fact, if you used little buttons or beads, it would give a little bit of shine to your ladybug. And if you're using it as a decoration for something like a wreath, that might be a fun idea because it just gives a little more zazz to the project and of course you don't have to worry about washing a wreath so if you're going to treat this like a, a craft bobble or like a cob a kobachan i think they call those things if you're going to treat it like a like a like a um a craft piece for a larger craft project that isn't necessarily that's wearable or washable then you know you can break out the glue gun get out the beads and the buttons get out the ribbon get out all the fun trim and stuff um even the the puffy fabric paint if you want and uh, you can decorate it that way. You don't have to do the French dots. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so excited about this idea for the wreath. <laughs> Little coffee break, everybody. All right, so before I show you guys the French knots, I'm gonna let anybody who's sort of just finishing off their little body or their head, you just take your time to get past that. Let me show you the other two iterations that I had. So when I sit down and design because we've done the little bumblebee first. So we did our little bee. Um, I had the bee on the brain, so I made my first ladybug kind of like a cartoon to sort of match him. I had the same sort of little line running through because I was picturing like the, the, the delineation between the little wings. You know how just before they take off, they go split. <laughs> I love that. So I was picturing kind of like the split wing of the of the little guy and I liked her being outlined in black like the bumblebee because I thought that made like a cute little pair and then of course they've got the same head and the same antenna and I added her little French knots. Um, now I have to say Mr. and Stitches pointed out that this does make her a lot darker. He preferred a, a much more red looking ladybug and I had to agree you don't really see her dots as clearly but I do like that these two look like a little matched pair. I think that's kind of cute. Um, but that was, that was my first iteration. So kind of the same build as the bumblebee, but just slightly changed a little bit. So to me, that looked a bit like a matched pair. Plus they're also the same size. Oh, a straw hat idea. You guys, you guys are full of such great ideas. So that was iteration one. And then because the mister was like, I think you need more red. I did this little version of it. So I still had the sort of split wing idea. Um, I didn't outline the body, so you can see her little black dots a lot better. Um, and her little head and antenna, 
um, sort of show up a little bit more because there's not that extra outline. But she's smaller. Um, and Mr. and Stitches still felt like that stripe was kind of kind of big. And I have to agree. It, it's sort of a, a pretty big stripe running down her back. So uh, that was my, my second version of that, which I think is cute. If you look at sort of like all three of them. So it's kind of like it's the evolution of the ladybug. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, um, uh, Jessica Rabbit had gone ahead and created one herself. And she sent me a picture uh, through the Etsy shop. And it looked a lot like this one. And I thought, oh, this was so funny. She and Mr. and Stitches think the same. <laughs> So I tried to make one um, that would be about the same size as this little guy, and I still wanted to keep with the head. So this was iteration number three. Uh, so and with with an inspiration, thanks to Jessica Rabbit and uh, Mister and Stitches. <laughs> Bethany B, hi Bethany, thank you so much for gifting a membership. Congratulations, Debbie. Debbie has won it. Welcome back to the family, Debbie. Um, so yeah, those were my, my first two little versions. I, I still like them. I'm going to keep them. You'll notice I, I left the tails on them because I'm probably going to add them to little projects too. I still feel like they, they kind of have a place here in the craft room. Um, but I do like the version that we eventually came up with. It's also size to scale wise, like sort of similar in size. I like her being nice and big. Um, and uh, her little dots show up much better because she's got a much bigger body, but the head is still nice and large too. So there we go. That's how I arrived at that. They are all, they are all cute, I think. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here we go. Let's add some French knots. Like I said, if you wanted, to, um, you could fabric glue little felt dots or something on here, even if you were going to use this as a hat decor or... Um, if you were going to put it into an, a larger project, as long as you use something like fabric glue to, to glue down your dots, that's okay too. Uh, but I like the little French knot idea because it's it's pretty simple and small. You only need about a, you don't even need a full yard of your black yarn. And I love French knots. I love embroidery. Embroidery is pretty easy. Uh, you don't need to knot it to start. Just thread up your needle. And I like to aim to do three dots. But you could do even more if you wanted to. I just kind of like that, you know, somewhat mirror image kind of look. So all I do is I bring it up roughly where I think I want my first dot to start. I come from the back to the front and I leave some tail out the behind. Uh, you don't need to knot it down. You want to keep your sewing tails out of the way. And then you're just going to wrap the yarn. The first dot is always a little bit fiddly because you've got the, the loose sort of tie end at the back. So don't worry about it. Uh, you can use it as practice. It's a little easier to make this one. I can wrap my yarn three or four times around my needle. I go with four because I'm using a skinny weight yarn. But if you're using a thicker weight yarn, like a size four or bigger, maybe only three uh, wraps. And then you kind of lay your hook um, you can sort of tug on that back tail if you want. You lay your hook down um, on the surface of your applique. So it sometimes helps to do this kind of on the surface that you're working on. So you wrap your yarn around your needle. Keep your needle like on the surface of your applique. You don't have to... It, it, when I first started doing this, I made the mistake, or not the mistake, but I was always over worried or anxious that I wasn't going to get a tight enough knot and I would really struggle to kind of hold the needle against the thing. You really don't have to be that rude to yourself. <laughs> you can just tug gently on it and then hold the last wrap and the, the needle and then pull the needle through. So you pull that all the way through and I'm trying not to get that. And then, so you've got, now you've got like a little knot, just kind of pull Hold, squeeze the wraps, pull the yarn until it doesn't want to go anymore. If it comes out, that's okay. It's because this is here. And then you can just tug that back down and you've got your first little French knot. Then, and this is the most important part, when you go back down through your yarn or back through the fabric of your ladybug, don't go back through the same place that you brought your yarn out of because ultimately that could pull your French knot down through the stitches. So just like you know, hop over top of one little stitch. Just don't go back through the same place, that's all. You can stick your needle down anywhere you want. Just make sure it's not back through the same place. And then 
That's French knot number one. Easy peasy. It sticks out. It's got kind of a fun, like uh, three dimensional feel to it. All right, let's make a few more. So um, leave that tail there. Try not to like grab any of your other tails. I sort of keep them out of the way. I'm gonna do three sort of evenly spaced. So I'm just kind of working my way around between, I'm coming out between say rows five and row, uh, or I should say row four and row three of the body, but I, it doesn't matter. You're just kind of going to equally space out your, your little French knots. So yarn comes fully out. You see there's a little bit of a, uh, a reach back there, but this gets glued down or sewn down. So it doesn't matter what the back looks like. Don't fret about that. Also, if you made two, you could stitch them together. Um, that would make a really cute little keychain or a little dongle to hang off the, the rear view mirror. Uh, in which case you wouldn't need to have long tails left on both of them. You would just need the long tails left on one. I might do that. <laughs> Ah, the ideas, they just flow like the sap in the trees because it's spring. So I pulled my yarn out. Now I want to make another French knot. So I'm going to wrap my yarn around my hook four times because I'm using skinny yarn and I want it to be as close or as tight to the to the body of the, the fabric I'm working on. So if I'm like way up here, so let's say I, I, you know, I comfortably wrap yarn and I'm nowhere near, if I pull it, and gently lower my needle back down. So I'm pulling, it will tighten it up, tighten all those wraps up, and then my needle will lie flat against um, the, the ladybug. And you just wanna keep one hand on it. You know, keep, keep your hand on the needle while you tighten things up. You don't have to really hold it or hold it in the air. I find it really works nice to work flat on the surface. And then once you feel like it's nice and snugly wrapped around your needle and your needle is nice and flat against your work. You just hold the wraps, grab the needle and pull it through while holding those little wraps. And then you can just sort of like pinch those little round wraps with your finger while you pull on the other tail and that will tighten up those little knots. Really great little embroidery trick. And then hop over, don't go back down through the same place. And there's little French knot number two. Sip of coffee. All right, I'm gonna do my third one down this side. Uh, about there's good. I love little appliques. Crocheting appliques has always been one of my favorite little things to do because I've always felt it's a bit like, it's a bit like painting, painting with yarn. And it's a really quick and easy way to, to dress up a, an existing project, to add a little bit of a theme to an existing project, to make a, an existing project more unique or maybe more specific to a, to a friend. Like if you make a, a, a dishcloth, okay, dishcloths are great. You know, people like getting a brand new homemade dishcloth. They're wonderful. Well, if you also know that your friend absolutely loves like bees or ladybugs or flowers or something, and you go and you make a little bit of a, like if you make a cotton dishcloth and then you grab that cotton and you make a little applique and stitch that onto the dishcloth, you've just super personalized a very plain object and you've made a nice gift even nicer. And I think that's why I love appliques so much. You've, you've done a little bit of extra artwork on it. So wrap the yarn around the needle, tighten it up so that it feels like it's snug up against the body. Hold one, pull the needle through, tighten it up. These get quicker and easier to make as you practice. So there's number four. Oh, you know what? And if I don't like the placement of that, I can just pull out the last place and maybe make it go in the other direction. There, that's better. A little more pulled into the middle. I want this one over here. They don't have to be perfect mirror images of each other or like, but I just, I feel like nature does that a lot. Nature tries to be pretty symmetrical. There we go. Maybe right there. And one more. 
that too close? That might be too close. If you accidentally yank your yarn out, don't worry about it. Just uh, hold everything in place while you thread your yarn back up. This is why I love these yarn or wool needles. That loop eye really makes things easy. I think we've got uh, an affiliate link for those in the description box of most of our live tutorials. So if you're looking to pick up a pair and you can't find yours in your local craft store, um, they are available on Amazon. And there's a few different manufacturers that make them. Pony makes a nice set. Um, I use the HA Kid ones. Uh, Love Knitting is an HA Kid brand that they make for Walmart. So um, you might find them in Walmart. I did find a set in Walmart um, and they're the HA Kid ones that I like. So uh, if you want a pair of those, I highly recommend them. They've just, they completely changed my knitting and crochet game. It makes weaving in ends, doing embroidery, uh, sewing on appliques. It just makes them so much easier. Uh, I would love a sponsor from HA Kid. <laughs> But uh, so not sponsored, these are just one of the best tools I've ever had. Highly recommend. When you've got all of your dots on, you can just pull your yarn to the other side. So ignore your sewing, your sewing tails. Here's your two embroidery tail ends. Knot them together. Don't pull too tightly on that initial knot because you don't want to, um, you don't want to like, you don't want to cinch your, your bug together. So flat, lay it flat, get it as tight as you can without over tightening make that a nice tight knot i like to do it three or four times just to make sure that it doesn't want to come undone and then it's the back of an applique so it doesn't matter so you can just trim any excess and that is what i'm going to do there we go so that is the back of the bug the back of the bug so you can see sort of where i went around adding my little french knots and that's it that is the applique. Like I said, if you wanted to stick a couple of these together, um, if you were doing it with that intention, um, you don't have to add the little, in fact, you could make the whole thing, the whole thing black if it was gonna be the bottom of the ladybug. But if you wanted it to look the same from either side, you could make two identical and then just leave the sewing tails on one and just stitch all the way around it to kind of make it a little, a little three dimensional thing. I think that'd be cute for like a keychain or something. Oh my gosh. All right, everybody. Um, do you have questions about the ladybug applique or heck even the bee applique? I've got that here too. We just had a question from Karen. Karen. Karen asks, um, is it better to steam block or use a blocking board? Ah, it depends on what you're up to. It depends on what you're comfortable with. I don't own a blocking board. Uh, I have a an ironing board and I often use that when I'm blocking because I use a steam iron. So I'm comfortable. I feel it's safest to work on the ironing board. That said, I have ironed on the floor before. Um, don't iron on the carpet. Make sure you lay down towels before you do such a thing because you don't want to harm your carpet um, if that's all you've got. But I prefer to work on the tile because it's flat. Still put down some towels. Um, and then I steam block. If I'm steam blocking, I don't feel that I need the the stretch board. Um, if I'm going, if I was going to use a stretching board, I would probably just get them a bit damp and then like, I'm thinking more in terms of like squares, I would put them sort of into their position and let them dry there overnight. But I typically steam block, uh, most projects. Sometimes if it's something awkward, like a sweater or a cardigan, and there's a lot of like angles and things, I will steam out any problem areas. So if you've got tight stitching, but the rest of it is like pretty even, it's those problem areas that I focus on. So I would steam out the tighter stitches to loosen them up a little bit and let them look like the rest of the project. That's like for sweaters and stuff. If it's a blanket, you might find the same thing. You might have some areas that are tighter than others, especially if you made it modularly, like putting squares together. I would just focus on those tight areas. I won't do the whole blanket necessarily. I'll steam the edges so that the edges lay flat and I can make the edges look nice and even but I won't necessarily do the whole inside of the blanket if I don't think it needs it. Um, steam blocking is 
much more surgical. It's much more directive. You can be a lot more specific with it. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can, but you don't have to. Uh, washing and blocking, obviously you're getting the whole thing clean. Maybe you're knocking out the, the little fibers that kind of, you know, break while you're working. So that's nice to wash, especially if you're giving it as a gift. Um, and then laying it flat to dry lets you block it. So you can put down towels, lay that thing out, whether it's a blanket or a hat or whatever it is. Um, you can lay it flat and, and kind of pin it into place or, um, uh, even just pat it into place. Sometimes I don't find I have to pin. I just sort of like stretch and pat, stretch and pat, stretch and pat. And as long as it's sort of sitting on a towel, it'll lay flat and it'll dry that way. If it's something with shape like a hat, you could leave it on a hat stand. If you don't have a hat, a head form or a hat stand, um, you could blow up a balloon and put it on a balloon. Um, there's a lot of like, you can get creative with, with shaping things. Um, if you, if you're worried about that, if it's a wearable, like from when I did my cloak, I steam blocked, uh, my cloak and I got some, so I steam blocked the bottom edge, but then I got like the top part a little bit damp to kind of, cause I didn't want to steam it up top. I didn't feel it needed it, but I did want to like, uh, let it, I got the whole thing kind of damp cause I wanted the weight to kind of pull the cloak down and I super padded a regular hanger with towels so that when I hung the cloak on it, knowing it would be heavy and wet, I didn't want it to create um, bad shaping in the, in the shoulder. So I completely wrapped a regular hanger with a lot of towels to, to emulate my own shoulders before I put the cloak over top of that wrapped towel, uh, a wrapped hanger, and then I hung it and it let it just hang like it was on me. So, depending on the project think about what it if it's a flat like 2d thing like a granny square those stretching boards are fantastic but not necessary um if you don't want to spend the money to go out and get them or you can kind of create your own you can also just you know use your ironing board get it a bit wet and leave it to dry on a, on a towel or use a bit of steam in the problem areas um, it really depends on the project. And if it's a wearable, think about how it's going to look when it's worn. Uh, I don't recommend hanging anything on a regular hanger unless you wrap that hanger with a towel. Uh, because hangers are narrower, usually, than our shoulders. And they will create shaping in the shoulders. They'll, they'll poke through. They'll create like a little edge of the hanger. You want to avoid that. So wrap a hanger if you're going to hang something. Um, does Jada still have her ghost applique for Halloween? Yes, we do, Don. Um, that is the, just if uh, you can't find it right off the bat, just search Jada and Jada in Stitches ghost or crochet ghost and they'll all pop up. Uh, we still have that there. And that pattern, I think, that's still in our Etsy shop too. It should still be there. Um, paw prints. I think we have a paw print square. We have a Fair Isle style paw print, yes. It is a uh, pattern available in the Etsy shop. And if you're a member, a Silker Vicuña member, that is one of the pattern perks that's up on the members website. So uh, you can turn that little sampler into a granny square, just like we've done with some of the other Fair Isle style samplers here during live streams. You can also use that graph to repeat it as many times as you want. So uh, we have, that's the, that's the paw print pattern that we have currently. Um, we don't have, anything that's more like shaped like you know like you would make the paw print first and then build a square around it we don't have anything like that yet uh still thinking about that one but i like i like the fair isle style because it's <laughs> it's uh it's it's an it's like a it's like a print it's literally a print of a paw print <laughs> um can you repeat the hook size and yarn yes size? i use now because this is an applique i recommend the if you're going to match it to an existing project use the same fiber like if it's an acrylic blanket aim for acrylic if it's a cotton hat use cotton um i used a size four weight for the red very light four weight and a size three weight in black, but you can use whatever weight category you want, depending on the size that you're going for the project. Like you could make this whole thing in thread, for example, crochet thread with a tiny hook and it would make it super, super small. And I'm just thinking that would make such cute little earrings. You might want to make two and stick them together, like stitch them together if you're making them earrings, just so the back doesn't show. Uh, I used a four millimeter hook. This is also known as a G6 for this size and weight of yarn. If you're going to upsize it and use like a chunky weight or a bulky weight or a super bulky weight, you want to upsize the hook to suit. When I'm making an applique or an amigurumi, I tend to go a little smaller with the hook. So for example, if you get a ball of yarn and the 
um, the gauge information on that ball of yarn suggests working a gauge with like let's say it's a four weight yarn and it suggests a five millimeter hook or an H8. That's fine for things like blankets or just general stitch work, but if you want something small like an applique that's kind of a little bit denser or an amigurumi, you want to go down a hook size, half a hook size, a full hook size, depending on your own tension. Um, so you can vary yarn weight, yarn fiber, and hook size with an applique. It depends on the size you're going for and the project you're making it for. But today I used uh, Acrylic, four and three weights, a G6 hook, and my scissors and my yarn needle. I'll make sure that information's in the description box too. Um, some of us are curious what it would look like with a little bit of um, uh, like the black line going down the middle. Can you just like stretch out some yarn hmm. over the, uh, the wings? Like this? Yeah. Yeah, that works. I don't know if you'd be able to chain it that thin though. Uh, you could just do a straight stitch. Why not just do it like like if we're talking cartoon? Let's see what you got, Jada. All right, all right, here we go. Pull out those crochet skills. So I wouldn't crochet. If you're going for something really, really thin, I would go for a running straight stitch, so a little bit of embroidery. So let me get these running stitches out of the way. No need to knot it in place. I'd come out right at the base of the head where we based those seven double crochets. Uh, hold a little tail back for knotting. I will hold my finger on it to keep it out of the way. And then you don't want your straight stitches to be too terribly long, so I might go like skip a couple of rows, make a straight stitch. Hello, Jordan. Jordan has popped in and gifted a membership. Thank you so much. Jordan with a gifted membership and Sue has won it. Congratulations, Sue. Welcome back to the family. Thank you so much, Jordan. So there's my first straight stitch. Now I can't come back out the same place because I'll just take the stitch right out. So I'm going to jump ahead to the very middle of what was row one and I'm going to bring my hook up right through that and then right back through that place. So you can sort of see that I'm embroidering a straight line down the back of my... now. I've come back down through there. I'm going to come back up through the middle, making sure that I don't sit to one side or the other of the stitch. Don't pull too tightly. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So all I keep doing is I keep, I want to make a nice as straight a line as possible. So I always just take my yarn and I lay it straight down, trying to make sure that I'm as straight as possible. And then I look for a good spot underneath that straight line to stick my needle. Like right here looks good. And then I'm going to come up through the edge, not around the edge, but underneath the very bottom stitch. And I'm going to go back down through that same place, making sure I get right in the same place. That creates a nice straight line. So no crochet required. It's a nice thin straight line. It delineates those two wings. And then I would just knot those two ends together. That also looks really good. Yes, again, I can't get past this kind of cartoony they all, they idea. They look of, good, to be honest. I like the idea of being able to see the wings. So I'm just going to knot those two ends together. Again, I'm not going to do it very tightly because I don't want to bend my ladybug out of place. But this is the back of the ladybug, so it totally doesn't matter what it looks like. Knot, knot, knot. And then I'm going to trim whatever I don't need. There we go. And voila, voila. Let me just wrap that up again and stick that under one my... ladybug. So there we go. That's the ladybug with a little delineation in the wing. Yeah, there we go. And let's see the other ones. Let's get them all on camera there. My earlier versions. They are all fantastic. <laughs> They're all cute. They're all cute. This little one's very small. That's a baby. Uh, I feel like I feel like though I, I liked your suggestion though of, of leaving out that main line because it does look a little messier than it does I, on. I it think looks if like it you were fits. making a large applique. It might have worked. It, it would absolutely work. Mm. Yeah. So there you go, guys. If you want to add that extra line, I would just do a little basic straight stitch embroidery. Super simple. Um, and again, you just sort of knot your ends underneath and. Uh, yeah, that's cute. I like them both. I feel like 
that adds like a nice little detail, but I also like the simplicity of this. <laughs> Mom, dad, baby, and older goth older sister. Goth sister. <laughs> Tasha, I like that. Yeah, this <laughs> is the right. goth. That's the goth. This of is the, the little sister who's looking up to the goth, the goth teenager. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> oh my like gosh. It. You guys are awesome. Um, I, I love the idea of putting them on to a wreath. I think a, a wreath would be such a fun idea. Um, especially like for the summer, like a nice little something for the, the front door. I think that's such a cute idea. So bees and ladybugs. We've got a uh, tutorial for the bee that was up last Friday. And now we've got this live crochet along for the ladybug. And I'd say they're both roughly like the same size category. Um, so there you go. A little intro to the spring garden to get us going here. Uh, oh, and a garland dawn. Oh, I like that idea. I'm not sure which I like better, to be honest. I, I, I really liked that line. I think that's why I was trying to use it in the beginning. Um, I like them both. I like them both. I feel like... I feel like I like this better though. I don't know. I guess it depends on what I'm going for. If I made this even smaller, then I might not want the line there at all, but I like that little line. I think that's cute. This is so great. Okay, you guys. I like the line too. Um, yeah, if you're going to add the line, then you can do that. Uh, I feel like that's the easiest way to do it, to add that little line. Plus it's the sort of the, the, the subtlest. Uh, if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to fling them in the chat. Otherwise, you can leave them in the comment section down below. They will uh, only be answered if you fling them. <laughs> if you just type them in, we're not answering any Stephanie, questions. I love that idea too. Refrigerator magnets. Absolutely. If you're going to make it like a refrigerator magnet, you don't need the long strings left to do any sewing with. So you can just fasten off and weave in tails. Um, and then add a little glue-a-magnet to the back. What a cute idea. I like that. Oh, ladybug and bee bookmarkers. I love that idea. Joyce, what a cute idea. Wee! Dragonflies. Rosie, I'm going to have to do a dragonfly. I'll see what I can do. I love the idea of butterflies and dragonflies. I like a whole series of little, uh, maybe April should just be some cute appliques here during the live crochet alongs. What a nice little idea. Get a little garden full of pretty little insects. <laughs> And uh, the paw print, yes, we've got the paw print, that Fair Isle style paw print. Um, did we not? I guess we did do a live on that, but we do. That came up early. I think it was like March or April we made that up last year. I'm seeing a lot more trolling Mr. and Stitches in the chat than questions. <laughs> Everyone's more interested in trolling me. <laughs> you guys are so funny oh my gosh okay um if you do have questions don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section i try to get to questions and comments at least once a week um so i see them so it doesn't matter what video you leave them on i will see them but if it's a question about a specific video please try to leave it on that video so i know what you're talking about <laughs> Um, pop into the shop anytime. The uh, little sneaky sale will be on all day today. So if you uh, arrive late or if you uh, pop in later this afternoon, uh, whenever we do a live crochet <laughs> along and we have a live sale, Rita, thank you for picking up a couple patterns. Um, the, the little sneaky sale runs the whole day. So uh, don't feel that it only runs during the, the sort of the, the brief window of our live hangout together. Um, it is there if you want. Please Please take advantage of the sneaky sales whenever we announce them. For the um, record, you're getting requests for every insect under the sun. Uh, the, 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 yeah, well, I, uh, dragonflies, I'm just butterflies. talking throughout the whole stream in the chat. Like, all the, all the cute insects were coming out. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they're so cute. Especially love the little ones that kind of just trundle along. Well, I was along. just picturing a, an old sweater covered in, in all those little appliques of different, um, yeah. Different insects, like a collage would look kind of cute. That would really be cute. I, I'm thinking I'm going to make one in cotton. I'm going to, I think, I, I'm not sure if I've got any 24-7 red. I'm going to have to, oh, do I? Yes, I do. And I have, do I have black? Do I have black? Did I get 24-7 in black? I don't think I did. Did I? Yes, I did. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to make one and add it to my bucket hat because I think my bucket hat needs a, needs a ladybug. <laughs> I will do that later. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful week. We will see you Friday. I uh, I have a cabinet to finish painting that will be on my list of things to do today uh, or possibly with the rest of this week. 
little uh, bit of spring cleaning since the nice weather has finally arrived. And of course, we'll be preparing a video tutorial for Friday. Um, if you're still a little unsure about our schedule, Mondays we try to live stream at about 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Sometimes we're a little late because uh, getting it all started <laughs> sometimes takes us a bit. But live streams are Mondays, regular pre-recorded videos and video tutorials, vlogs, that kind of thing. Pre-recorded videos are up on Friday unless we make announcements to otherwise. So the usual schedule, Mondays are live streams, Fridays are regular tutorials. We've been uploading a Friday tutorial every Friday for like 10 years. So most of you will probably be familiar with that. But if you're new, that's the regular schedule. Um, and we have a members version of this tutorial, or I should say this pattern available on the members page for Silk and Vicuña members. That's your, uh, your perk for April. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And um, if you do want to pick up a pattern, it's in the shop, but uh, this tutorial isn't going anywhere. All of our tutorials are available for you guys, so please feel free to pop back in at any time. Thank you, ladybugs and, and gentlemen. Yes. We appreciate it. Um, we will see you guys later. I will put some thought work into making a dragonfly or a butterfly. Maybe that'll be next Monday's. Well, uh, we have the butterfly, but we could revisit that tutorial. I want it that, to be bigger, that though. Old. I, I would want it to be bigger. You know oh, how, like, okay. these yeah. guys are, like, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing this whole um, thing as a set now. There was a now. firefly, and then there was a couple other suggestions. We'll have to look through the, yeah. the chat. Yeah, we'll have to, to go back and look at it. Um, comments in the comment section, too, because those are sometimes easier for me to see. So if you have an idea for a bug to suit our little April uh, applique uh, line, then leave them in the comment section. And I'll be able to kind of make a little, I'll compile a list, and then we'll put our heads together, and we'll see what we can, we can sketch um, and stitch up. I'm going to put our channel, YouTube channel homepage link in the chat. And um, you can go to that page. You can click on the videos section at the top, and then you can scroll through all the videos we have. It's over 10 years. And also, you can use the search button that will specifically search our channel. So if there's a specific pattern you're looking for for a tutorial for, check the channel. Um, there's a good chance we have it. It's not 100%, but... <laughs> Um, that's helpful thank you mister um, Dina just had a great idea I just saw it uh, pins yes if you wanted to attach a pin to the back you could you could just wear it as a pin um, so in that case I just want to follow up because that's a great idea Dina um, you don't need your long sewing yarns you would do all of your embroidery however you want it the way you want it don't worry about what the back looks like then I highly recommend taking a little piece of felt, and it doesn't matter what color, cut a circle smaller than the overall edge of your applique, so like just a little circle, and fabric glue or sew it in, and then add your pin, sew, sew or glue your, your brooch pin or even your safety pin onto that piece of felt, and that just makes the back look neater. It covers up all of your little bits and your tiny little tails. It kind of just con confines it all in one place. And it gives you like something sort of solid to stitch or glue that pin onto. So if you're going to turn it into a brooch, I would approach it that way. Approach the brooch that way. <laughs> approach the brooch. Um, also, um, if you are looking for specific appliques, we must have... Oh, a caterpillar! A caterpillar! Yes. Carol, thank you. I'm going to start making a list. plus? How many appliques would you say we have on the channel? Oh, a lot. 30 to 40, maybe 50. So just search applique on our search button on the channel, and they should all pop up for you. Yeah. Ooh, a spider. Okay, Dawn doesn't like spiders. I'm not a spider a spi fan either, but I do. Spiders so do have a, a place. I will add a spider to the list just in case. I thought I, we had a spider. Uh, no, we have a spider web. We have a we had a spider spiders, web. Spiders give. I love. I have a great deal of respect for spiders. I understand their position on the planet and their and their work and role in the ecosystem, and I I love them for that. Just please stay off of me. <laughs> stay out of my yard. A cute spider, Sue. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yes. I, I, I think spiders can be cute. Yeah. I Jessica need Rabbit Jessica Rabbit. Wants, no, thank you. No, she <laughs> absolutely wants the spider. Jessica oh, Rabbit adding them to yes. fingerless gloves. I love that idea. 
Oh my gosh, you guys! Okay, ideas are flying in. I absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> comments in the There's comment Charlie section. with all the insects. <laughs> oh, the worm! A worm! Oh my god! A gosh. little glow worm would yes. be really cute. A glow worm! Oh my yeah. gosh! I'm I'm writing these down, guys. I'm writing them down. Okay. Um, <laughs> on that note, have a great week. We'll see you Friday, and um, keep those ideas coming. I will uh, I will keep the list going, and I will. Mr. and Stitches and I will, will sketch and stitch up some, some new ideas this week for some, some more appliques. And uh, we'll have another one next Monday. Uh, I don't know what it'll be yet, but I guess it'll be a little insect applique. I love it. We'll, we'll have ourselves a whole little, a little, little group of them. <laughs> All right. Um, take care, everybody. Mr. Stitches, anything you want to add? That is it. We'll see everyone on Friday. Marvelous. Have a great week.